All right, guys, we're out here in this blustery, awesome day out here on the range, and we've got something a little bit cool to show you guys. So you guys know that we do a lot of shooting with the uh, st shoot steel targets. Behind me are three short range rifle targets. And what these things do is they're designed to take impacts at close range with rifle rounds. And they're designed to deflect that uh, frag from your rifle rounds into the dirt as well as uh, protect the targets themselves from excessive damage. Uh, these are three quarter or three eighths inch targets, uh, which typically would, even though they're AR 500, would experience some uh, damage from uh, rifle rounds at this kind of range. We're shooting at approximately 25 yards right now. And uh, even if I had one of their static targets sitting there and I shot it with my AR 15 with just standard ammunition, it would typically exhibit some kind of pitting. These don't experience any of that kind of stuff when you shoot them at this kind of range. Uh, the one thing about these, uh, these targets that are a little bit unique is they also, even though they incorporate the same stand structure, uh, the base is a little bit longer, which allows a, a little bit better stability because those, those targets lean forward about 30 degrees. Uh, and the, the vertical structure, which is a two before, is shielded. So the frag, when it hits the target, not only deflects down, but typically that would direct it directly at the 2 before 4 that supports the, the, uh, the target. The 2 before 4 is there to save weight so that you can comfortably carry the target for, for a fair distance, which we do on, a, on occasion do. Uh, but the, the shield that you can see on the vertical keeps that frag from basically cutting the target down. Um, if we pan over here, you can see that we have a static target set up here and it is just the standard vertical setup. Uh, what I'm gonna do go, what I'm gonna do is illustrate the difference in sound between the two. Because there's a, because these are at a different angle and they're bolted a little tighter than the static uh, targets are, the resonance on the target is not quite as high as the static target. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just blast them with my pistol a few times. Uh, I've got my SIG 228 here. This is an M11A1, you guys have seen that before. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just hit this target right here real quick. You can hear that nice resonance. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit each one of those targets and you're going to hear a, a considerable difference between the two. Now, you did hear that there is some ting, you can hear that, but sometimes it's lost depending on the angle at which the target's hit and depending on how big the piece of frag is that is actually hitting the vertical on that, uh, on that target depending on where the frag's going. Can give a little bit of, uh, of noise and uh, sometimes when you guys see us shoot them in our videos, you'll, you won't hear any, any uh, audible report from the, from the short range rifle targets. It sounds like we're missing and we really suck at shooting. but. Actually, they just don't make as much noise, and we're actually working on a on a kit uh, to uh, make those uh, targets a little bit uh, more audible. Uh, now that said, we're going to go ahead. We're going to not shoot the closer or the static target with the AR-15, but I'm going to go ahead and shoot these three guys with this uh, with my carbine here. Now this is just a standard 5.56 carbine. and we would see um, no damage on those targets whatsoever. Uh, but if I were to uh, have shot this target, it would have probably beat it up pretty, pretty bad. That thing's at about 10 yards. But uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is just for shits and giggles, they're not rated to do this, but we're gonna go ahead and shoot them with the Mosin. And uh, for that, we're gonna go ahead and bring uh, the Wombat in here and uh, do some, see if we can't damage the targets, but I'm pretty sure that they're gonna be able to take that pretty well. Let us go. All right, Wombat, what do you got going on here, man? Today we bring out Comrade Wombatovich in his native environment of the Siberian winter. And we make a big boom. I'll get a rock back and forth with power of the motherland.
He hit the recording device with casing. No boom, but can see target move. That got a nice thing. Yeah, I mean, when, when you're hitting that, I'll hit the one in the middle again. Just the uh, incident angle of the round does factor into see that target's moving yeah but you can't really hear like i personally don't know if the microphone's picking it up but i can't see hear targets are moving i can't hear the targets being hit yeah the center one is uh basically directly ahead of me and we're getting some good audible report but when you're using power of the soviet the mother lab it's easy to see target waver in the face of our communist the wave of destruction yeah. yeah sometimes you will get just a pop or kind of like a click sound on the target instead of an actual ting a metallic sound uh, that's what we are able to get a little bit of on the ones that are angled at slightly different angle to me but the center one that I'll hit again you'll you'll get a nice uh, good confirmation that you hit it we purpose purposefully nice <laughs> <laughs> we purposefully somebody did stake that one down uh, but we purposefully have those at three different angles so that uh, you can hear the difference she is dry all right what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and approach and check out the uh, if we've got any kind of damage I'd say we chipped the paint at least. Okay, so uh, for right now we are shooting 147 grain uh, steel cord surplus ammo. I believe it's Bulgarian. We must put him down into his proper environment in order to pick up target. Most in the gun to love snow. Arr! Comrade Wombat not love lifting things. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever set that thing up did a shitty job. Kind of did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that's on us, definitely not on the target. But as you can see, you get that nice lead splash coming out from those big rounds. And in all honesty, this is where I put two rounds right on top of each other. Actually, three rounds right on top of each other. And there's, there's a slight pit kind of where all those impacts overlap you can see in this area but actually all we've got here uh, there's no concavity to where we are here it's actually raised up slightly from the impact of that lead uh, it's kind of melted to the surface of the target uh, a couple other spots where I'm gonna guess these are Mosin hits here and here uh, there's there's no pitting in this target as you could hear it was getting nice solid hits uh, near the dead center of the target this area is where they pretty much all were except one that went a little low and I can actually pretty much pick that off uh, is a little raised out portion where some of that lead is left over so even with uh, a pretty decent penetrating round like that 762 by 54 r out of a really nice long barrel like what's on that Miz and the Gaunt 9130 um, we're really not <laughs> doing a whole lot of damage for these targets and this is actually beyond what the manufacturer states you should be shooting at it and uh, we're still even though we're pushing these targets pretty hard they're standing up uh, pretty solid from what I can see as per our uh, reputation that is <laughs> yeah we, we tend to overdo it a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely well hey why don't we shoot some more ammo at it uh, with the Mosin I'm interested to see if the uh, the the wolf rounds do any do any different yeah, we're gonna go ahead and instead of shooting surplus ammo, we're gonna go to some new manufactured wolf ammo uh, and hit it with Comrade Wombatovich a few more times, see if we can discern any difference there. Be right back with you. Okay, Comrade, so Bulgarian surplus ammunition has failed to defeat the shitty capitalist American steel. 
So now we try with the Wolf Russian 174 grain full metal jacket ammunition from the motherland to destroy capitalist pig guys. Make a big a boom. It's much bigger boom than 147 grain. <laughs> it defeated him, yes. Take a uh, reload him. Shoot the left one in the face. Shoot him in the face. You hit him in the neck. Hit him in the neck. We aim slightly harder. Hit him in the neck again. Shoot the right one in the face. Shoot the right one in the face. Ah, in the face. Direct hit, right? <laughs> in the zygomatic process. <laughs> I'm the one that puts badass groups on motherfuckers. <laughs> put, uh, do me a favor, put one in the uh, support steel. Duh. We are dry. Let us observe. Hello, my friends. We begin battle damage assessment on fallen capitalist pig. Good, good, good weapon. He's uh, not going to pick him up because I'm very weak. Uh, okay, so down to business. Uh, what we can definitely discern were shots from the 174 grain ammo from Wolf. Uh, were the shots near the head here, and. As far as the difference goes, we're still seeing that similar, slightly raised up portion from the uh, steel cores and the significant amount of lead splash and frag that's around here from it, which if you look at the... Uh, <laughs> this is a serious frag field. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like the surface of the moon over here after what we did. Um, we are able to see a little bit of a difference. We were able to get what is a very slight pitting from those 174 grain uh, 7.62 by 54 R rounds, which are really moving. I mean, that, that's quite a powerful round. We jumped from 147 grain to 174, so roughly, what, about a 25% uh, increase in the amount of power we were, or the uh, weight of the bullets we were putting out there. So we did, were able to get some pitting. Uh, repeated hits on this, in the same area or on the same exact spot. Yeah, that, that's gonna shorten the life of your target substantially, but, uh, Really, the target is still intact. Uh, n no real structural damage to it as far as its overall integrity. We just have a little bit of pitting from those the big heavy wolf rounds. So it appears that the motherland was able to uh, inflict some damage here. But so let's go check these other two targets that are still standing up here yeah, and see if we've got any different result. We'll see what we got. Uh, so the, you were hitting that guy in the neck. Yeah, I know that, that is definitely a fresh one. Um, same kind of thing that we observed before. We get that nice big splash from the lead. And you can actually see, I just took it off of there. That lead flakes right off of there. Uh, underneath it, there is a very slight pit there. I can barely feel it through my glove. I'm actually taking my fingernail through the glove on it. It's a very slight pit, actually less than what we saw there uh, on the, the fallen capitalist pig. <laughs> but uh, So similar, but to a lesser extent, very slight pitting. Uh, really, I think it took that round pretty well. <laughs> All right, and now let's go right over to this guy because I know you hit him right in the face. Yeah, he took, uh, I believe, two rounds from it that were uh, right in the face there, yeah. Uh, here, on this particular one, I'll actually remove my glove even though it's, we're, we're running about the eight degree range today. 
there is not pitting here. This particular one is is smooth. There there is no pitting there. Uh, this other round, I'm trying to determine if this is pitting or raised up, just deposits from the material and the bullet. And I actually think that maybe the angle was, was able to change the amount of force that was delivered to the target or some other factor, but we are not seeing pitting on these. Yeah. Uh, the angle may have dissipated some of that energy a little bit better. But yeah, this is this is deposit from the bullet that is raised up. That is not an indentation into the target. And you can also see how that angle helps you out with the distribution of that lead splash is directed downward. We can see there. And we and did we did put a direct shot right on the base steel there. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that because yeah, that's a that's a direct shot right on the on the shield there. And as you can see, even that defeated it. I mean, if it hit it right on the corner, so it did kind of chip it a little bit, but yeah, you can that, see that, that the base of the round, the actual round impacted uh, on the, yes. well within the, the, the border. Yeah, it was able to take a chunk of the corner out. We can actually trace the uh, fragmentation from that uh, out and away from the target. So yeah, <laughs> uh, a substantial mass. <laughs> of the bullet itself, it, it basically shattered that bullet and sent it in that direction, which is what we want. It's on the ground, not up in the air going somewhere. It's not coming back at us over there. Uh, and that's really what the main purpose of these is, for you to be able to uh, utilize rifles that normally are not as powerful as you know, the motherland spawn over there that we were using. But uh, I, I'm pretty impressed with what that was able to do. We, we sheared that corner right off and we sent it uh, in a safe direction and uh, as far as we're concerned with the other impacts we can see even with the evidence left behind that we have that downward deflection at play here so uh, it definitely is the one what it was designed to do as far as using those angles to the, the advantage alright guys so we're gonna do a little bit of a test just to illustrate the uh, the power of the Mosin uh, itself on this uh, shoot steel gong back here. Uh, just so you have a little idea of what those uh, targets over there are taking, we're gonna see if we can't flip her over. But just so uh, you guys can see, uh, on, the, on the left side here, we have the Bulgarian surplus stuff, and here's the Wolf uh, ammunition. So this is 147, and this is uh, 174. 74, so transpose the numbers there, and you get you got the, uh, the various uh, weights of these rounds. So we're gonna go ahead, shoot the Bulgarian first on this uh, swinger here. And uh, actually, I'm not gonna use that round or that rifle. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and use this. A lot of people consider this sacrilege because this is uh, a, uh, a uh, painted gun. It's less pointy. It is a lot less pointy. It doesn't have the bayonet on it anymore. I, go, I went ahead and ripped that off. I have no idea where it is actually. <laughs> but this is actually Duraco by Lauer Weaponry. If you guys haven't seen that stuff, it's pretty cool. It's actually a spray on with a uh, with an airbrush. I just take an airbrush and, and brush it on. I do a lot of uh, the AR-15s, like this particular rifle was uh, is Duracoated as well. But it's a really hard finish. It's a little harder than like your Krylon or something like that. It's not quite as hard as uh, as Cerakote, but it's uh, it's pretty awesome stuff. And I I, t I like it because it's easy to do. It it dries by itself. You don't have to use an oven or anything like that. But it has produced a pretty solid finish, even on this wooden gun here uh, that I had to that I had to sand down. the The only reason I did this is because this uh, if it was as nice a gun as Wombat has here. I would not have done that to this gun. This thing looked like it had been drugged behind a truck. But anyway. Yeah, that other example is, is in pretty good shape. And it is a 1942 vintage. I do believe this one is uh, as well, but uh, I'm not sure. You guys uh, that know a lot about Mosins would probably you know, say that I don't know what I'm talking about. This one has the uh, the hammer and sickle insignia on it. Does that one have the hammer and sickle yes. or does it have the star? It's it's hammer and sickle. It's okay. 42 so it's it's Soviet era. Okay. Um, I know Bacon has a uh, has one with a star on it and he has not shot that thing. It's pr pristinely cleaned and it's it's hanging out in his safe because he doesn't want to destroy it in any way. But it's a uh, it's a nice gun. But anyway, Bulgarian. Let's see if I can't flip her over. 
I gotta hit it. I haven't shot this gun in probably like... Gun is not pointy enough. Did I miss left? Because they, they hold left when you... Uh, uh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it went left. <laughs> that's so pretty that's impressive. Without the bayonet on it, um, and I, this was brought to my attention by a viewer actually, uh, I th thoroughly researched it afterwards, but the guns shoot left without the bayonet attached. Correct. Because they're zeroed with the bayonet and the bayonet hangs off the, the right side. The dissipation of energy is influenced by that bayonet being on there, so it'll push around um, back towards yeah. uh, the right a little bit. Uh, it'll have an influence on your barrel harmonics. Yes. <laughs> it's jumping. She is. <laughs> Give me a couple more right on there. Here, see if I can't get one in the center. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, so before we do anything, I want to go ahead down range and check that target and see if we've got any any damage to it uh, from those uh as you can see it's flailing through the air. It's really getting it's really getting lit up. We see if the 147 grains did any damage to that target. I'm not suspecting that they did because that target's able to free spin or free swing. We're going to go ahead and check that real quick. Yeah, it's actually able to move with uh, the force of the impact rather than just having to stay there and take it all right so it dissipates a lot of that energy through its swing uh, so let's go ahead and uh, and go check that out all right guys so we do have a little bit of pit here did what you know we're not talking about like it any kind of major damage I can't really even feel it uh, feel it I can't feel the pit but I can see it um, you can definitely see that there's a, a little bit of an indentation there so this round hit here, 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 and here. Some of these other things that you see on here are uh, actually seven and six from a uh, AK-74 AK uh, that we were shooting it with earlier. And it actually, the, the seven and six rounds do a lot more damage than the <laughs> Mosin rounds do, which is uh, typically you wouldn't think of that, but those are moving, those are cooking really fast and they do have a steel core in them. So uh, I don't think we have a barrel obstruction, but we're gonna go ahead and just real quick uh, pull the cleaning rod here off this rifle and just check to make sure the butt hit first. So we would suspect that, that we're good. Yep, all right, we're clear. We'll recover this in a minute. Stick him. But anyway. Now we've got the wolf. Remember these are 174 grains out of the same rifle. Go ahead and save Wombat stripper clip so I don't. <laughs> and that is still an grade. FMJ round. Yeah. We so, see if we can make him do an inside out boy like children from America in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm expecting, my, my hunch is that this thing is gonna go I think it might actually pull, do the whole deal. If you guys don't remember Inside Out, boy, you suck. <laughs> he flipped over the swing set and he turned Inside Out, man. Oh, come on! That. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> that is so awesome. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. The most in the gun is the most fun gun that I own. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you guys think that shooting an AR-15 is a lot of fun, I mean, yeah, they are fun because they shoot fast and they can. They don't have a lot of recoil impulse. It's a different kind of fun. If you've never shot a Mosin, I really suggest that you get one. You can uh, squeeze together a hundred bucks to go get a Mosin. Yeah, I don't know what they are nowadays. I think they're probably a little bit higher than that. Maybe closer to. I know that I purchased that rifle for about seventy-five yeah. dollars. Uh, you know, but that was before the one who will not be named took office and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but I, I mean, this, this was, was one fifty after. Yeah. So this one was this was in uh, two thousand ten, right? Thirteen. Two thousand thirteen. Yes. Oh yeah, that uh, yeah. 2013, and uh, uh, it was 150. It was rated as excellent condition at that time. 
and it, it it's still in pretty good shape. It's got some scratches on it just from uh, banging off holstered handguns and things like that. But uh, it's it's still in pretty good shape. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's a need to uh, to uh, I think we've done our done our work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with this gun, I don't think we need to do it again. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, see if those uh, rounds did any damage. Alrighty, let's take a look. Filming. All right, so uh, there were three shots there. One of them hit a dead center uh, in here somewhere. It hit it right and kind of doubled up these two rounds that were here already. Um, as you can see, there's no there's no pit there or anything like that. Uh, the one that kind of wobbled a little bit was actually this chip. I forgot to hold on the side of the target, and uh, and uh, basically we got a little bit of a of a left chip on that. So the target kind of just wobbled a little bit, and you can actually see the the hole that it left in the ground over there after it skimmed off the uh, off the target. But what's interesting is that the one that sent it over was actually right here. I would think personally that you'd have to hit it towards the bottom of the target to send it over. But after I think about it a little bit, this is going to allow you to dissipate some of that energy in the actual yaw of the target here if you hit it at the bottom. Whereas if I hit it right here, all that force is basically immediately transferred to the chains and it went right over. So uh, basically, if you look at where it's placed, it's right even with the bolts. So there's no, there would be no, uh, no actual individual swing of the target like this. It would just go straight back. So that was actually really cool to see. And uh, for a second there, I didn't think that it was going to go after over after the first shot. After it didn't go over after the first shot, I didn't think it was going to. Yeah. But uh, we got her done, and this is another uh, illustration of just uh, just how powerful the Mosin is, and how awesome some of these targets from ShootSteel.com are that they're able to take that kind of abuse and just keep chugging. So, what would you estimate is the weight of just the gong, not even counting the pretty heavy chain? Uh, probably three pounds, three four pounds, something like that. I don't think it's quite a five pound weight, but I'm uh, I mean I mean it might be. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but. Just based on the weights in the gym, I would I would assume that this is a little bit lighter than a five. Yeah, you usually lift with fives. Fuck you. But uh, look, it did choke up the chain quite a bit here. That's kind of it, it, that that was an impressive application of Soviet force. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and untangle this chain. But hey, guys, once again, thanks for watching. Uh, check out ShootSteel.com. Uh, they uh, they have a discount code in the description that it can help you guys out a little bit if you guys are interested in these targets, as well as the rest of our sponsors are also down there as well. And they are offering you guys some great discounts uh, for their products as well. So go and check them out, and thanks for watching.